Hello everyone, this is Jason Chen. I'm from Inter Virtualization team. Uh, thanks all to join my presentation about supporting TE on x86 client platforms with BKVM. First, I would like to show you a general use case of TE on client platforms. You can see in this picture, it's actually a scenario become more and more popular on client platforms. Uh, the scenario want to place one primary OS together with one or a few trusted execution environments, uh, which is TEE. While for the uh, primary OS here, uh, it expected uh, identical user interface as native. <coughs> and at the same time, uh, it also expected managing all platform resources. And the TEE here is targeted to do confidential computing and it does not trust primary OS or other TEs. So it need be isolated by either specific hardware like uh, TDX, SEV, or a hypervisor uh, for performance without such kind of hardware support. <clears throat> so basically, uh, specific hardware uh, support is not always there, you know. So if we talk about the hypervisor solution, we expected uh, a hypervisor with small TCP, uh, which make it hard to be attacked, and uh, and it can be seen enough. Uh, at the same time, it should be transparent to most platform resources. So currently, the most popular hypervisor in the open source world is KVM, but KVM is working together with Linux kernel with over 20 million lines of code. So it has a very big <coughs> TCB, and at the same time, it's complicated for KVM to provide a solution of pass-through or platform resource to one VM. So we need to do something to build a suitable hypervisor for this scenario. Google introduced protected KVM on ARM. It's used for an example of supporting primary OS plus TEE on Android platforms, so which is a typical use case in previous slides. It's designed to support TEs as VMs in ARM non-secure world. It tries to isolate trusted applications, which may not be trusted words to put together in the secure world. So the PKVM on ARM is taking use of ARM's non-VHE mode. It is split hypervised part uh, from Linux kernel, which original running at exception level one to exception level two. It's a good try. So we saw PKVM progress in the community. It made us thinking of sim similar approach for interpreter phones. Then we do, a, do the POC and bring the solution here. Okay. This page will give you <coughs> an overview of PKM running flow. I will also uh, elaborate uh, some basic functionality part of PKM in the following pages. So first, PKVM is post-launched. It's a binary built-in KVM model. It will be verified built together with kernel image, then split from the kernel <coughs> when KVM model get boot. So the splitting is also called deep reach, as it will uh, split KVM uh, into two different uh, privilege level parts. So one is KVM high, it will stay with primary OS kernel at low bridge level. Keep running like native and still acting its VMM loads. And the other one is KVM low, which is PKVM hypervisor. It will run in hyper-rich level with super small TCB. With the PKM hypervisor support, we then can support trusted guests for confidential computing during the long time. So the trust guest here is also named the TEVM. Should its memory and the status should be protected by PKM hypervisor. <coughs> and one another thing I want to highlight here is that 
DOS attack from the primary OS is not in the scope of PKVM protection. So as primary OS owns uh, vCPU scheduling and the VM management, etc. So it, it's all because we want PKM hypervise to be very lightweight and we do not want uh, to, it to do any complicated system management uh, to increase its TCB. OK, <clears throat> here come to some details. So this page is talking about the deep bridge. So for ARM and x86, the deep bridge step uh, is similar, but with architecture different solution. So for ARM, it is using uh, non-VHE mode, just like, like I mentioned uh, in previous slides. Uh, so it can make primary OS kernel running at year one at the very beginning, and during the deep bridge, it just uh, install PKM hypervisor's binary uh, to year two. And for x86, uh, its virtualization technology is based on uh, VMX operation mode. So originally, the primary OS will first run at VMX root mode. And uh, during the deep bridge, so we need actually need to do real deep bridge for primary kernel to VMX non-root mode, which means we will make this into a primary VM. And at the same time, we will keep PKVM hypervisor running under VMX root mode. Okay, it's important for PKM to transparent the platform resource to primary VM, just like I mentioned in uh, previous slides. So we have common mechanism for ARM and x86. So we will do identical memory mapping for primary VM, and we will pass through system memory uh, to primary VM, except uh, PKVM's code and the date. And we will pass through MML to, uh, P, uh, to primary VM, except our MMU, which should be maintained and managed in PKM hypervisor. And we will also pass through interrupt to primary VM. So based on this, primary VM actually can directly manage uh, all uh, system uh, resources through native device driver and native ACPI drivers. And also it can take use of native system service like OSPM to manage uh, platform, uh, platform powers. Okay. So <coughs> TEVM's memory need to be protected, as we know, it's very important. Uh, so we should maintain uh, each memory's ownership in PKM hypervisor during its memory's transition. So currently x86 is using same mechanism as ARM, which is to maintain each page's ownership or page status in EPT page table. So for ARM, uh, it will maintain its page's ownership in stage two uh, memory trans transition uh, tables. But uh, there is some difference uh, for the implementation for, for ARM and x86. So for ARM, <clears throat> it tries to do memory transition through HVC, which is hypercore. Uh, it will checked by KVM MMU, uh, which means it will change part of KVM MMU code. And for x86, we do memory transitions through EPT shuttering uh, within PKVM hypervisor. So the benefit for it uh, is uh, it will avoid to change KVM MMU code to reduce the possibility of creating bugs in KVM MMU. But uh, you know, at the same time, we also see similar operation as ARM for uh, inter TTX solution, which we are changing uh, KVM IA's MMA code to do SIM call for memory transition. 
So we may need discussion in the future to see if PKM uh, x86 need uh, move to use hypercore for for your memory transition as well. Okay, <clears throat> interrupt and handling is straightforward. Uh, we have common mechanism for both ARM and x86. So as you know, we pass through all physical interrupter to primary VM. So primary VM will manage or external interrupt. Then it will check if such interrupter should be injected to its guest. If yes, it will do virtual interrupt injection <coughs> through virtual interrupt controller, which is emulated by KVM High. So we say uh, virtual interrupts are fully managed by KVM High in a primary VM. Okay, MMI handling also uh, has common mechanism between ARM and x86. So basically, we say general MMI emulation will still be done by VMM in primary OS, just like a, a Lexi uh, VMM. And to support the virtual emulation, <coughs> we need a TVM explicitly share memory to primary VM for what what how quick buffer accessing uh, from the back end. And the one specific things for x86 is, is, is instruction emulation. So as normally x86 uh, need to do instruction decoding and the emulation in the host uh, after MMIO violation to figure out uh, what needed to do for an IO request. But you know, a TVM forbid, uh, forbid this uh, as its instruction memory is isolated to the host in the primary VM. So the solution here is, is that we will leverage the solution from TDX software uh, by moving uh, instruction emulation into TEVM. So after it fix out uh, the valid I/O request. It then explicitly uh, do a guest hypercore of this I/O request to the VMM in the primary VM for the final I/O emulation. Okay. Uh, DMA protection is much uh, also very important to protect the TE's memory from DMA attack from a compromised device. And the protection is done by comprehensive reuse of IOMMU. We see uh, similar requirements here. So we need virtual IOMMU in primary VM to support untrusted device isolation and the device isolation to its launched guests. We also need PKM hypervisor to own physical IOMMU to finally ensure the device isolation to TEVM. And as we mentioned in previous slides, PKM hypervisor is recording uh, its page status or its memory uh, ownership in the EPT page tables. While our MMU page table also show its ownership uh, to access a page. So we sure have a good mechanism to align ownership for a specific page among these two different page tables. To meet these requirements, we provide a solution for x86 based on VTD scalable mode. So you can see primary VM uh, will see a virtual IOMMU with only first level page table and uh, it will fully own it. And the PKVM hypervisor, it will own physical IOMMU and it can work under nested mode by directly reuse faster level uh, pay table in primary VM and uh, also use its own uh, second level page table. So this is typical used for a uh, normal device, IOMMU pay table in a normal VM. And for T device, for the T VM, it's IOMMU pay table uh, in the PKVM hypervisor can work under next uh, second level page table only mode. Uh, it will shadowing uh, first level page table in a primary VM to second level page table. 
Okay, all the second level pay table uh, in the PKM hypervisor, we will unify it with EPT pay table to simplify the page on the super management. And as for ARM, now we see solution based on a very simple hardware model, uh, which is S2 MPU. Uh, the full name is stage two memory protection unit. But uh, it should not be a general IP. The solution uh, based on ARM's general IOMMU, SMMMU, uh, is still to be updated to me. Okay. Uh, this is a summary of uh, all previous slides I mentioned for, for uh, uh, some architecture details. So it's a key architecture comparison between uh, ARM and x86, uh, but I will not detail each item, uh, which I already mentioned in previous slides. One thing I want to highlight here is uh, for guest attestation. So, for guest attention uh, for x86, we are still working in process, but we will try to follow similar solution as ARM, uh, which described by Will Deacon uh, in KVM Forum 2020, uh, which will simply use a template uh, bootloader. Okay. Okay. This page uh, gives you an overview of PKVM x86 architecture. So basically, uh, we have a thin hypervisor uh, PKVM here. So which only uh, own necessary hardware model like IOMMU, VMCS, and the EPT. Uh, all these models uh, will just used to help to do isolation of TEVM. And the primary VM here on the left top, we are on all left resource and the directory and manager then, uh, just like it was in native. And also primary VM still playing VMM loads. It will run its guest based on virtual IOMMU, virtual EPT and the virtual VMCS. So both normal VM and the TE VMs here on the right thought are running like a guest of a primary VM. Uh, the VM exit for the normal VM will first exit to a uh, PKVM hypervisor, <coughs> then directly forward to primary VM uh, for handling. And for TE VM, the VM exit will also exit to PKVM hypervisor, then forward to primary VM for handling, uh, but V Add security enforcement in a prime uh, in a PKM hypervisor to ensure there is no sensitive data leakage uh, during this kind of operation. Okay, this page and uh, the next page will show you a basic performance evaluation result for primary VM and the normal VM on PKVM. So the test covered I/O, uh, CPU, and memory. So as you know, for primary VM, we pass through almost everything, which include the interrupt. So it means the VM exit from the primary VM uh, will be largely reduced. From the result, you can also see they are very close to native. Okay, as PKVM hypervisor is very thin, and for a normal VM, its VM is that we are just direct forward to primary VM. So we can say the penalty of VM is it cost in PKM hypervisor is small. So based on it, uh, we see test result of pass through IO, with IO block, IO and the CPU memory are also very close uh, to VM running on top of native KVM. Okay. This is the last page uh, I want to show you uh, uh, in this presentation. So it's about uh, our uh, state update for PKVM on x86 and, uh, and uh, also our next step in the future. So currently we already uh, can deprage the primary OS uh, and also to run normal VM uh, with simulated and pass through IO which is based on virtual IOMMU. 
and also uh, we can run TEVM with uh, memory protection uh, in PKVM hypervisor. So in the future, uh, first so we will publish our PKVM IA's wrapper uh, in the GitHub, and also we will try to do the discussion uh, in the community to align common uh, framework for PKVM uh, for both x86 and ARM, and also uh, some platform in the future. And also, we will continue to support um, TEVM features, like we will uh, support pass through I.O. Uh, based on what I have MU, and we will support uh, what I.O. based on shared memory and uh, I.O. request uh, for TEVM. And we will also support the security enforcement uh, to ensure there is no uh, sensitive data leakage from the TEVM during VM exit. And also we will support TEVMs with guest attestation. Okay, the last one I want to highlight here is that our target lines of code for PKVM IA will be less than 25 uh, thousands. So, so we will keep it uh, uh, as a small shake and uh, make its TCB as small as possible. Okay, that's all. Uh, thank you, and everyone. Uh, we can start our Q and A.